So it begins. It has been said in the mainstream media that 2022 is going to be the year for fantasy genre properties. Now, for those of you who found me and subscribed to me and have been supportive of my work around Amazon's Wheel of Time, you know what kind of trouble that can bring. We also got Witcher Season 2. It's not an understatement to say that the reviews have been mixed. However, the episodes for Wheel of Time and The Witcher are, are astonishingly dwarfed by one single property, and that would be Amazon's Lord of the Rings series. Have no fear, I will also be getting into the HBO Max property, that prequel to Game of Thrones, but that is another video. Undoubtedly, Amazon will have learned nothing from its first season of Wheel of Time when they also drop the second season in 2022. So that makes two big fantasy properties for one large corporation. Now, The Wheel of Time had a great many fans. I was one of them, and thanks to all of you who have, again, viewed all of my Wheel of Time videos. However, let's be really honest about this. The Lord of the Rings is the gold standard of fantasy. The books have been translated into more languages, I think, than any other written book out there. And this is a world whose origin started over 100 years ago. Countless different versions of The Hobbit, as well as the Lord of the Rings trilogy, have come out. And despite Tolkien's own not wanting to have certain unfinished works out there, they have also been published. Now, the lasting legacy of the printed word, it's, it's undeniable. It had a huge impact on me as a, as a young boy reading those books. However, the 2001 start to probably the finest three movie adaptation of any book ever by Peter Jackson has set a standard that would be extraordinarily difficult in a normal timeline. But in current year, with ideology, politics, woke agendas, casting based on quotas, and a focus on deconstructing intellectual properties, it is neither unfair or fatalistic to say the standard set by Peter Jackson will not be matched, let alone surpassed. And in my opinion, Peter Jackson, when he was brought in to help the Hobbit air quotes trilogy, which should have been two movies at most, he was unable to capture that same magic for the Hobbit property. The reasons why, I can speculate on, but I am going to say I am sure there were too many damn cooks in the kitchen. Don't believe me? Here's a true story. Now, a long time before Peter Jackson started shooting The Fellowship of the Ring, the property had the involvement of Harvey Weinstein. Yes, that incarcerated <laughs> Me Too poster child, Harvey Weinstein. He and his brother, whose name escapes me and I don't think anybody really cares, were very adamant that they did not like how simple and non-adult themed Tolkien's works in the screenplay that Peter Jackson wanted to go with. What did Harvey Weinstein want to do with Tolkien's works? Well, good old Harvey wanted to kill at least three of the hobbits off. He wanted to get more of a hard R edge to it, a much more grisly, grim, dark fantasy take on the Tolkien stories. So much so, and again, this is a true story, he wanted to bring Quentin Tarantino in to direct the Lord of the Rings movies. Could you imagine that? Now, I, for one, would actually like to see Quentin Tarantino get Star Trek. I mean, how much worse could he do than we've already seen with Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard? But that's another video. At the end of the day, the arrangement with Weinstein fell through and the property was transitioned to a different studio 
And we got the three timeless masterpieces that Peter Jackson gave us regarding Tolkien's brilliant stories. Here we are, now in 2022, and I can't help but notice the same type of meddling from Amazon Studios. Now, it is not a rumor Amazon Studios needed to hire an air quotes intimacy coordinator, which is used in highly sexual nude scenes among actors for their Lord of the Rings production. Yes, that that is not new news. However, I want to piggyback that onto something that just emerged in my world about a week or two ago. Now, I don't have sources. I'm never going to make shit up just to get views. This actually comes from my own speculation. And that is, and I'm sorry to use three words, wheel of time again, but it's important. We had an original first episode draft of the Wheel of Time leaked on the internet that to a lot of people looks 100% real. What the hell does that have to do with the Lord of the Rings? Stay with me on this one. That episode one screenplay was very sexualized, had a lot of adult themes, and you most certainly would have needed an intimacy coordinator for the type of hard R mature content that they were trying to turn Wheel of Time into. And I started thinking about this. Did they shoot a lot of Wheel of Time episodes out there that burn through their budget using that hard R approach to then only go back through and realize, hey, we can't take two fantasy properties and make them Skinamax. Let's save the Skinamax nudie stuff for... Lord of the Rings, which in my mind is a very likely reason why Wheel of Time looked so empty and so small scale. Amazon didn't want to use the same formula that they intended to use for Lord of the Rings. That seems highly plausible to me, especially considering some other anecdotal evidence presented around Rosamund Pike and what type of scenes she wanted to feature involving intimacy in the original screenplay. All right, that's enough of Wheel of Time. Let's talk about Lord of the Rings. However, I want you to bear that in mind, that the likelihood of us getting a adult-themed, more Game of Thrones version of Amazon's Lord of the Rings, I think, is nearly 100%. Now, if there are those of you out there in the chat that have any information that indicates otherwise, I would love to see it. And not just so I can make videos on it, but because I want more than anything in the world for Tolkien's vision and his values as an individual to be represented on the screen. Now, why is that? Well, let's again look at what Peter Jackson did with his movie trilogy. He wasn't telling his story. He wasn't inserting his politics. He wasn't making it more accessible or having representation. He was telling a story that had been created by a genius that was loved by people all around the planet from all kinds of different cultures already. There was no need to muck about. Arguably, the same thing could have been said in, in the Wheel of Time series. I have people commenting on it still that are from Sri Lanka, from India, from all over the globe that don't understand why Amazon ruined Robert Jordan's story. Should any of us be surprised that they would have saved all that hard R sex, violence, Game of Thronesy cut and paste stuff, especially hiring so many actors that were actually in Game of Thrones to be in Lord of the Rings, to me this, this unfortunately looks entirely like what we're going to get. Well, it's really obvious in doing my own research over the past week that the shills are out there already. Much as we saw with Wheel of Time, people are white knighting <laughs> in such a huge way. And here's why. If you thought $80 million that they blew on making one season of Wheel of Time was a lot of money, Amazon has put $1 billion 
with a B, $1 billion into this Lord of the Rings property. Obviously, that includes the rights to the Tolkien estate, building a facility to shoot at in New Zealand, all of the special effects work, a very large cast, travel, and then all of the ridiculous restrictions that have been imposed on productions around the world for the last two years. In addition, there have also been significant firings of people who were in positions creatively as well as behind the scenes. What all of this has ended up at is that originally we were supposed to get 20 episodes of a season one of Amazon's Lord of the Rings. Instead, we are only getting eight. To me, that's a major warning sign. That's, that's a pretty darn significant drop in output. I will speculate when I say this, it is my opinion, there is a lot in the can that was shot, that was put before audiences, and they did not like what they saw. What are you feeling about Amazon's Lord of the Rings? If you, if you were a fan of Wheel of Time and you saw what they did, how are you feeling about what Amazon is going to do with the Tolkien property? What is your sense as far as them making it more accessible and relatable for a modern audience? And do you think, much like Rafe Judkins told us, that Amazon is going to, and I still can't believe people think like this, their target audience is are not the fans who love Tolkien and his books and maybe even the movies, but rather their target audience is someone who has never seen the Lord of the Rings movies and has no interest in the books and maybe even doesn't even watch fantasy as a genre. I know it sounds insane, but look at the insanity of what we got with their target audience for Robert Jordan's works. What do you think? Do you have faith? If so, why? If you don't, what do you expect them to jam into Tolkien's works? Has ever. This is Salty Texas C. I am Corey DB. Again, happy 2022. May this year find us joyful, free, and living our lives the way we all want to. All of you have an awesome week.